Hi everybody, welcome to Build Play Go. So this is gonna be, maybe, the very first we're actually wiring things um, video. So what we have here is the panel and the sub-panel upside down for the RB10, um, where I have actually finally mounted or, and figured out the, the permanent location, permanent location of all of the components. Um, so I made some brackets for certain things uh, for where uh, we're going to end up using them. Um, and, uh, you know, there isn't really like a a good guideline of, of where you do this. So I've, you know, like Mary and I just looked at looked over all of it and figured out where things fit and uh, seem to work well for us. Um, we're using still the plexi panel because the, the plexi panel is uh, going to make it easier for us to, to wire things and... and get videos and show you where things are. Um, we will be disassembling this again soon to flip it over for easier wiring, but for right now, this has allowed us to mount everything and then sort of figure out our actual wire paths, right? Like you can see that um, there's a couple of different colors of wire right now. There's a blue one, some red ones, and some uh, black ones. And they're sort of going in different directions. The blue ones I decided are going to be switches. So um, any switch um, gets a blue wire. Uh, black wires are, of course, our grounds. Red wires, of course, are uh, power wires. Um, and a lot of the switches, not all of them, but a lot of the switches go to the uh, vertical power, the VPX unit. Um, so you can see, oops, see switches going this way. Um, the grounds are all getting ground on the panel. On the back side of right here, you can't quite see it, is just a, f a forest of tabs, I guess is how I call it, what I call them. And all of the grounds are going to go there. Um, you'll notice that I haven't terminated uh, the ends of a lot of these. Um, because we're still trying to figure out the perfect routing and I want to comb the, the, the wire bundles to make them nice and neat. Um, similar for the powers, right? A lot of the powers go to the VPX. Um, in fact, a majority of the power pins go to the VPX. And of course, there's a, a pair of uh, TCW Tech uh, backup batteries. These are lithium ion uh, backup batteries. And um, you've seen uh, in one of our other videos sort of the design of what we're doing and uh, a couple of um, Facebook posts and Instagram pics and things like that of what we're doing for the electrical system. Two batteries. Um, sort of split up amongst some of the components. Um, so, let's see. Um, routing, we're gonna try and keep everything along the front and things just going back to where they connect into stuff, right? So there's gonna be a nice tight bundle right here that goes all the way across and then, you know, paths to devices, right? So things will come down here, things will come down here and all the way to the back. Um, fairly simple. Uh, we mounted the um, GTR20, which is our uh, second COM, it's a remote COM, um, in the panel. Uh, I wanted to keep all of my analog uh, lines, uh, data lines, so um, the audio basically coming from the GTR20 to the audio panel mostly. Uh, really sort of close and tight. I didn't want stuff running back to the to the back of the fuselage or anything like that. So kept that here. And then the only thing from this guy that's going to the back is the um, antenna. Uh, the antenna for this guy is actually under the rear passenger left side seat. Um, similar for the uh, Sirius, uh, we have XM radio and XM weather. Um, it's a GDL. I always mess up the name of this one. I think this is the 51. Yes, it's a GDL 51R. Um, we have we don't need the 52R because we get ADS-B from the transponder, the GTX 45R. Uh, but the GDL 51R um, gets us music, um, which is uh, I, I find to be worthwhile, <laughs> um, and uh, XM Weather for if we ever subscribe to XM Weather. Uh, we don't have an active subscription for XM Weather in the RB9, um, but uh, I like the option of being able to pay for a month of that or we're going to go somewhere where there's no AD ADSB, but there is XM. Uh, especially the Caribbean now, I believe they've activated XM in the Caribbean, but there's no ADSB, so that's actually a good option for there. Um, yeah, uh, the you'll see more details in future videos of like where we've uh, sort of wired the data uh, wiring. We haven't gotten to that yet. Um, right now, this is uh, basically 
switching powers and grounds as we're sorting this out. So a big part of what's coming next is um, I've wired switches, right? Uh, and we're starting to get things, we're getting some of the basic components to the VPX. I haven't wired any of the, uh, we'll call them digital components, I guess, uh, to the VPX yet. So basically I just have, um, gosh, uh, USB power over here and oxygen power um, over here, and those are going over there. For the Garmin stuff, uh, this is how we do things. We follow the manual for everything, right? Like Garmin has like done an in incredible work in getting these manuals um, to be readable and easy to follow and things like that. Uh, I, I always keep one of these handy. This is from AC4313 uh, 1B. It's the uh, wire chart. It's the conductor continuous flow uh, length chart. So it lets you figure out what size wire you need for, um, for power. So very important. So always triple check stuff. So um, I print off the uh, instructions pages on the back for the different interconnects, right? So the in the in the beginning in the front page, sorry, front pocket, I have the you know how to uh, do shield terminations, um, solder sleeves, you know all of this kind of stuff. This is all available as a PDF online. You just download it from Garmin.com, um, and it tells you how to do all of this. Garmin also has excellent videos on showing you how to you know do these shield terminations, showing you how to crimp stuff. So I'm not gonna go over that. Look at the Garmin, watch the Garmin videos for this. They cover all of that. Makes sense. Um, so then I also print the interconnect drawings for the different setups, right? So this is the G3X Touch with a GSU 2025, uh, which is the, the air data. Um, and the GAD29, which is the AirInc box. So it basically just shows you line by line, pin by pin, the interconnects for each one. Um, and this is what we're gonna be doing. We're, we're gonna be following the manual, right? And checking off as we, go, as we do pin to pin that we've done that. So I'm just gonna use a highlighter on pin number seven and highlight pin number seven when I'm done here and say, that's good. Um, and you can see that it tells you what breaker size, what wire size, where the wires are supposed to go. There's a couple of little notes that you can look at for shield terminations. This stuff is, is easy, right? It's just follow the manual. And in here as well, there is the backup, the, the backup power for the IBBS is also all in here as well. Um, what else? The, the GSU and GMU interconnect drawings are in here. The servo stuff is all in here as well. So you see how they've broken this down into sort of digestible chunks, right? Like you don't have to look at the back of the, the GTN and say, oh my gosh, there's like 20 connectors in here and each one has 48 pins, what am I gonna do? No, you do this like section by section and then you're set. Um, it's really not crazy. We will be doing this. Um, you'll watch the time lapse of us doing this and I will be pausing every so often to show, you know, if I found something being particularly tricky or things like that. Uh, there, okay, let's, there's a separate one for the external stuff. Um, I printed the pinouts for the GDL as well. It's in here. Uh, the, I believe this is, yep, the GTR20, which is the second com. Sensor wires, uh, which are the uh, engine sensors and things like that. Uh, another one for the engine sensors, the audio panel uh, one, and then whoops, and then wiring diagrams for the um, IBBS. All of these man, all of these are available from the websites. These are the manuals that uh, I use, um, and it's the the manual that the vendors recommend you use, you know, to wire up your avionics. So the next step here is gonna be, I'm going to wire up the power pins for all of the connectors and the ground pins for all the connectors. And my personal rule of thumb for power and ground is I wire it up once and then I put it down, I go do something else for a while and I'm gonna come back and I'm going to check every single power pin, both for continuity to make sure that I get plus 12 volts on the end of the pin when I, when I put 12 volts on it and that I get ground to ground, that's one thing. 
but also I want to triple check that on the back of the connector, the pin that I believe is the power pin is actually the power pin. That is a surefire way to fry all your avionics is if you put plus 12 volts or 14 volts on the wrong pin, you will do damage. So you triple check everything. We triple check everything. Um, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to have somebody else come look at it. Probably Mary, I'm going to say, Hey, is I need to put power on pin eight. Is this pin eight and show you the connector. And we're going to look at it under the magnifying glass. Cause I want to make absolutely sure I'm getting old, right? My eyes are, <laughs> and like, is this pin eight? Yes, this is pin eight. So we know that we're back to back. Um, and then um, maybe we'll even start like mounting some of the avionics and powering it up at that point, right? Because they'll have power pins. Uh, of course, nothing that transmits should get power until you have antennas connected to them, until I have antennas connected to them. Um, but things that just receive, uh, you know, are fine to, uh, I believe are fine to power up, probably worth triple checking. Um, you know, we get some uh, blinking lights at that point. Then shut everything down. And then we start looking at the data wiring and the data wiring is all in here as well, right? Like it's all like, it's all defined by Garmin and the other vendors, what connects to what the interconnects and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoy following us along. We'll uh, get some time lapses going of putting this together. Um, the benefit of the time lapse is you don't hear me swearing about things. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll see you soon.